All right, welcome back everybody to another weekly devlog. This is an important one, not just because of all the work that I got done, but because we hit an important milestone. Let's get going into this and we'll find out what that is. So the main menu, got that made up, so now you can launch the game. It starts on a main menu level with a main menu widget and you're able to navigate the menus. Can't actually start a new game from there yet, but you know, Working on that. That should be relatively easy compared to everything else that I had to make for it. I improved the save system. So, one of the things about the save system was I originally had it just set up as a quick save system, which worked great. It was pretty much perfect. But there's a little bit of a problem with that when you start trying to expand that out. And that's you need to have things structured to where they can be used by multiple different systems. The way that it is right now, or that it, you, it used to be, it could only be done through the uh, player blueprint. And that would mean that everything else would need to access the player blueprint in order to save. And it would also, uh, it wasn't set up to be able to use slots. It was only set up to use a quick save slot. So now uh, I had I had that improved and reorganized the structure of it, so now it's a lot cleaner and is a lot more useful. And the big one now, game is on Steam now. It's it's on the Steam store. It's shown as coming soon, so you, know, you can't buy it or anything. There's no demo up, but that was the big thing that I was waiting for. It's up there. It is visible for everybody, so you can actually go onto Steam and search Maledictor. You will find it, and more importantly, you can wish list it. So, uh, you know, <laughs> please do. If you have interest in the game, or think you might have interest in the game, or <laughs> if you're not interested in the game at all, but you still watch these videos, <laughs> then uh, please do go on to Steam and wish list the game, because that makes it more visible to everybody else in the store. I was able to look at some of the analytics for it so far, and it's actually got a really good click-through rate for people who see it, so that's really, really nice to see. Uh, very encouraging, and it's a big step forward. And, uh, really, the it makes it feel a lot more like a game now, and it's gotten me to work a whole lot on this this week, so... It doesn't feel like it's only been a week since that happened. But anyway, uh, we got a settings menu made. So uh, the settings menu is not actually what it sounds like. It's basically you click on a settings button in the main menu and it takes you to the other menu that has, you know, uh, like keyboard, game, graphics, sound, things like that. So nothing major there. It's more of an interim menu, but still there. And needed to get done. And then graphics settings. So we have a graphics menu now. Now, so for graphics settings, it's kind of odd in that the the game is simple enough that it doesn't ooh, <laughs> it doesn't quite seem like you need to tweak too much with it. But some things you can't tweak below a specific setting. So a lot of the graphics menu was just trying to find anything that makes any sort of difference you know visually or performance wise and then uh try to structure it in a way that makes sense so what i mean by that is we'll take shadow quality for instance shadow quality you would normally you know you have low medium high but shadow quality in my game technically goes medium, or no, it technically goes high epic cinematic. And the reason for that is that if you have it at low or medium, it disables uh, the way that the light interacts with fog, which means that the game just goes pitch black. So... I, ha I had to make it to where you could not select low or medium, but still had to list something as a low setting in the menu. So uh, it's things like that. So 
Now, cinematic is a really, really high setting for Unreal, and it, it didn't even exist back in Unreal 4, so I just should tell you about, about how high of the, maybe not requirements, but how high the setting quality is. So I didn't necessarily want people to just select all high settings and then select the highest setting that Unreal even offers for shadows and then wonder why their performance has gone down. Truthfully, I'm not actually sure how much it affects performance. So that's one of the things that we're going to be working on later as I start sending the game out for testing. But uh, in the menu, we have it to where high will actually show up as low. Or it might show up as medium, I'm not sure. <laughs> I can't quite remember. Uh, I have uh, epic set as high. And then cinematic I have set as ultra. And that's kind of a way to, you have to think about how to structure the language of the menu so that people, if they do select all max settings and then their performance tanks, they might know where to consider looking first when they start seeing that, well, only global shadows goes to ultra. So maybe look there first. So just a bunch of things like that. I'm still trying to figure out graphic settings to enable and disable and I'm still really really trying to improve performance here and which leads me to the next point found a massive performance issue with fire so the performance issue with fire that we were having before was pretty severe so uh in the screenshots I had this house that had you know some fire coming out the windows the problem with that was that I would go up, I, I would go up to the house, I'd turn left on the street away from the house, just not moving anywhere, just looking, and I'd have 130 FPS. Then I would turn to the right and face the house, and I would go down to 60 FPS. So if something is halving my frame rate, I, that's unusable. Is if that's going to do that for me, you know, what's it going to do for someone on a lower end system? So I had to essentially completely get rid of those fire effects, and I had to go and make my own, and we'll get there in a second. And so we had a shooting improvement and projectile improvement. Those are those are pretty simple. The main thing that was happening was the I had to change where the bullet and projectile was originating from. Originally, it would uh, originate within the weapon blueprint, which is tied to the camera. But you remember how last week I was talking about the issues that we were having with uh, the camera distorting, and then we had to, then I had to come up with a new system for how to adjust the the location of the weapon flipbook based on the aspect ratio of the screen. Which, thanks again to my dad for helping me out with that one. <laughs> and uh, so we had that, so I had that, uh, that fixed, but that meant that the uh, up and down value uh, would change of where your bullet and your projectile would come out, which would mean that you were shooting not out of the crosshair, but from lower or higher. Which, you know, obviously you don't want that. So uh, I bound the origin point of the uh, gunshots and projectiles to the camera itself. And it, that binds it to the center of the camera rather than, you know, the, the outer area. So that won't change based on aspect ratio. Then animated fire texture. So my solution to the fire issue was to make my own and hopefully, you know, that would improve performance. Now, I was originally going to try to make a particle system that would be able to do that, but then I I kind of found another way that looked just as good, and I figured it would probably be a massive performance increase over any particle system, and that is an animated texture. So... 
now I have uh, animated textures working as the fire effect with it, it's it's a little arrangement of a group of planes which have no back on them so it's essentially like it's invisible when viewed from the back but it's got fire on the front and then it's fire planes grouped around each other with an animated light bulb in the center so that it can simulate you know uh, the light from a fire and it actually looks really really nice i think so uh i i think it actually kind of looks better than the particles did but the big thing that is way better about it is that I don't notice really any performance decrease when I look at it versus when I look away from it. So that's pretty huge. Going from losing over half your frame rate to not really losing any, and it potentially might look better, and at worst might look a little bit worse, I guess, depending on your taste. So that's really nice. Pause menu. You can now pause the game, but more importantly, you're able to access the other menus from the pause menu. And kind of an, a weird little problem to have to fix with that that you might not have considered is that you also, when you are navigating the pause menus and you go back, uh, it knows if you are accessing those menus from the main menu or from the pause menu. So you have some options on the pause menu that you do not have on the main menu and you've got a different appearance for the main menu than the pause menu so uh, now it brings it brings up the correct menu based on how you opened it so that's nice as well uh fix the crosshair and shooting error so crosshair issue was it wasn't really rendering correctly uh, because of what i had designed it just didn't draw really well uh, at smaller sizes so i redid the crosshair and it's a it's a bit cleaner now and i i like it a shooting error that was essentially brought out by how the how like things were spawning out from the camera so fixed <laughs> i fixed a fix that was introduced in this video so <laughs> it won't really matter that much to you and you save and load menu and save loading from slots. So that means I made the menus for saving the game to a slot, loading a game from a slot, and then, you know, actually being able to do that. So actually I had to create the structure for saving and loading from slots. So got that done last minute, but it works just fine as far as I have seen. So that's nice. So I know a lot of people really want to see things in the editor and I like showing things off in the editor as well but unfortunately things I've been working on recently just have not been very exciting to see in the editor you know a, a menu is just text laid out in a widget and you know the most advanced that really gets is something like an invisible button that your mouse hovers over which makes the the text that it's hovering over light up this is just things like that and, um, you know, a, a bunch of repetitive code, really, like <clears throat> setting the save slot that each save button goes to and things like that. So it, it's not really all that exciting. We're going to be getting back into more interesting looking things as we go on. It's just right now, this is kind of just the, it's, it's UI work, so that's not all that fun. But now what should be exciting, or hopefully is anyway, is that I'm going to be needing people to start testing certain things about the game. So uh, if you go over onto the Steam page of Maledictor, you'll see a link to a Discord group for it. You can join in there, and soon I'll be posting it kind of an interest gauge in people who might be willing to do some, uh, I guess, if it's not beta testing, alpha testing, I don't know, <laughs> just to do some testing for it. Um, mostly, I'm looking for help with performance issues so that I can try to see what graphics options actually make a difference, uh, how it just runs on people's computers, and things like that, you know, the kinds of systems that I might need to plan around. 
So that'll be something to keep an eye out for. I'll probably make an announcement when that time actually comes, but you know, it never hurts to get prepared ahead of time, right? <laughs> so uh, I'll, I'll see if I can post a link to the Discord group in this video as well. YouTube's really weird with it allowing links. Uh, apparently channels that are below a certain age and I think might have less than a certain amount of videos or something just can't post links in their descriptions. So that, that's why I can't really link directly to the Twitter account. Speaking of which, <laughs> go check it out. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, that should be about it for this week. Next week, I'm... <laughs> I know every single week for the last like two months I've been saying next week I'm going to get to work on E1M3. Maybe, who knows. Uh, at this point, the menu was really the last thing I've been trying to work on, but who knows how long that other stuff will take in it. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to say hopefully I'll get to work on E1M3. And uh, as for now, <laughs> I'm going to head on out. Thank you everybody for watching. Make sure you go wishlist the game on Steam and follow the Twitter account for daily updates. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. Have a good one.